poison. Humanity's kryptonite, which is also Superman's poison. Whether from train derailments or baby formula, we've all been exposed to poison. Poison can have a different definition, depending on who you ask and how much they've paid. In today's video, we're going to be discussing one of the most fascinating poisons of our history that you've probably been exposed to many times. Today's video is about lead. You might have seen videos like these on TikTok of people using different lead testing kits on ceramics from Goodwill or different thrift shops, and they come up red, and it's all freaky, because it's like, I'm, I've been drinking lead paint. You might have even thought, I wonder if my vintage McDonald's 70s Garfield glassware sets have lead in them. Unfortunately, they do. I'm so sorry Garfield has lead in him. If lead is so toxic and poisonous, why is it in everything? First, perhaps a little historical context. Lead has been one of the most useful materials throughout civilization. It gave the Romans running water, it gave the Greeks and Italians paint, and it gave the Americans bullets, gasoline, and batteries. The only downside to lead, and what makes it a poison, is that lead attacks the brain, and it can cause severe memory loss, cognitive decline, and insanity. Old-timey painters would even be diagnosed with what was called painter's madness, which as we now know is lead poisoning. The first doctors in America to understand the effects of lead was actually in the 1920s. We're coming up on the 100 year anniversary. <laughs> and it wasn't until the 1970s when the US Consumer Product Safety Commission set a strict limitation on the amount of lead that could be in paint. The reason lead was added to paint is because lead makes paint more vibrant as well as it makes the paint more durable and harder to wear. Okay, that's enough history for one day. Let's talk about the now. According to the EPA, the most common source of lead exposure today is through dust particles in old houses. That's why almost all of the regulations about lead come down to construction sites and how construction workers handle old drywall, because that's where the most paint is. But where is lead paint also very common? On ceramics and on toys. Of course, you cannot use lead paint anymore in products, but what about thrifting? Those are still circulating the market with absolutely no regulation. In a time where a recession has been teased for months, a lot of people turn to vintage shops for cheaper items. Now for your favorite segment, the modern climatologist discusses the class divide. Why would people go to Goodwill to buy mugs if they knew there were lead in them? Most people don't know that there's lead in mugs still in circulation. We like to think that yesterday's problems were yesterday's problems, but they're still with us today. The other reason people go to Goodwill for mugs, a mug from Goodwill can be upwards of $3.99. A mug at Target is $10. When the minimum wage is $7.25, I'm not gonna dedicate an hour's worth of work to a mug when I also have to eat and pay rent. That is why people turn to old products versus new ones, duh. Just a reminder to anyone who makes more than $120,000 a year. Okay, okay, that's all. Now to the point where, which is why you probably clicked on this video, I bought lead testing kits to try out for myself. On TikTok, the most common lead tests you'll see are these ones right here. I bought this on Amazon. I, I, I'm not an affiliate of this company. Actually, when I Google the company that makes these, nothing comes up. These are not certified by any branch of the United States government. It's hard to say if these are accurate or not. We'll be testing these today. Perhaps it'll just be for a LARF. To compare, these are the official EPA approved lead test kits. They're called Lead Check, and they have a fantastic slogan, red means lead. If these lead test kits exist, then why doesn't every consumer just buy them and use them when they buy mugs from Goodwill? Neither of these lead testing kits claim to work on ceramics. That is where you see these being used on TikTok. So are the results of today's experiment gonna be beneficial or simply just increase my anxiety. Let's find out. All right, welcome to the lab. We're gonna be starting off 
with a control mug. This is from Starbucks. This was not thrifted. This was purchased from Starbucks. I'm hoping this does not have lead in it. This is our hopefully lead-free control test. You take the cotton swab end and you dip it in white vinegar, as so. It'll turn yellow, as so. Shake off the excess, and then you rub the swab on the painted surface for 30 seconds. We're in the clear. No red, just yellow. We're in the clear. Now for one that I'm almost certain there's lead in. I mean, I don't want lead to be in any of these, but if I had to pick one, I mean, just look at the colors. Look at the colors of the Scorpio mug. I mean, it, it, it checks the boxes, right? It's vibrant, it hasn't worn down. Let's give it a go. We got no lead. The test is in, you are not the father. We got no lead on this one. Shit, I really thought there'd be lead in that. Okay. Well, let's keep going. Let's see if we can we, let's see if we can strike strike gold here. From 1979. There's got to be lead in this. There's just got to. All right. Okay. We have we got red. We got red. We've detected lead. I'm going to do the rest of these and let you know how let you know where we fare. Gotta look at this one. And after all that, it turns out five of my mugs from Goodwill have lead in them. So now that we know how many, according to TikTok tests, have lead in them, we're gonna test out the EPA approved lead testing kits, if it's red, it's lead, to see uh, if it lines up with the test from TikToks. Maybe these have lead in them according to these, maybe they don't, let's find out. Now that we've crushed the innards, we gotta shake it until the tip turns yellow. <laughs> Jesus! Well, you know what they say, if it's red, it's lead. You can probably see it from there. This bad boy is red as Rudolph's nose. And just like that, these five mugs in front of you have tested positive for lead paint. Originally determined by these tests popular on TikTok and then followed up by these EPA approved lead testing kits. So these tests are not recommended for use on ceramics. They're recommended for use on drywall. But it's popular to use these on ceramics because there's no test for ceramics and the red does come out which does indicate that these swabs have detected lead so it, it is safe to say that these cups have lead in them but what does the epa and fda recommend that you do with mugs to ensure that they have lead in them they suggest you send them to a lab S send them to a lab i don't know what spider-man fucking world these people are living in i don't have a lab knows where a lab is i don't have a lab i have eleven dollars and an amazon prime account that's why i got these they turned red that's enough for me as a consumer to feel uncomfortable drinking out of these so now you know now you know a little bit more about these tests you know a little bit more about how much lead i've been exposed to <laughs> and hopefully this video makes you angry angry at the cdc angry at the fda angry at the epa because we have lead circulating in our market. We have people buying products with lead paint on them without knowing it. And yes, the FDA does have a campaign closer to zero where we are trying to get as close to zero lead exposure as possible, but we're, we're hardly there. So next time you're thrifting, be, be careful of the mug. Look for the date that it was manufactured. If it's before the 2000s, it's likely there's lead in it. But Make the best choice for you as a consumer because really no one's looking out for you but you. I'm going to go throw these out, uh, wash my hands, tell my family I love them, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.